Hey everybody, it's Teresa here with the Intentional Classroom. So I apologize for the break in videos. I have been busy traveling. I'm actually in a hotel room right now. So no backdrop, no lights, but I realized I needed to get something out there to you guys. I've had a lot of requests on Lightner and I thought, well, I'm sitting in my room waiting for a dinner date to Benihana tonight and thought, you know, this is a good opportunity for me to record a quick video to kind of overview Hair Lightner. So Thanks to all of you and your support. I have been lucky enough to be traveling around the country and talking to students and teachers about different things. Um, so I was really lucky to get to actually go to Orlando, work at, you know, speak at Premier Orlando, the big hair show down south, and go through some of these topics. So thank you so much for supporting me. It was so great to see some of you actually in my class this week, or this week, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, and again, I just want to make sure you know I appreciate everything that you're doing to support this journey that I'm on and that you are part of it with me. So thank you so much. So with that being said, today we talk about hair lightener and I chose this a while ago. I actually made this presentation probably a month and a half ago because so many people had commented and messaged me saying, I really want something on lightener. And I get it because as much as I like to talk about hair color, lightener is like it's its own beast. It's its own thing. So we are going to dedicate the next few minutes of our lives talking about lightener and a little bit about Olaplex because there's some questions there that even I had. As usual, I want to remind you to subscribe, share, comment, you know, go back and watch some of my other videos. I have a good amount. My library is getting pretty big. I have a playlist for teachers on teaching methodology, but I also have a beauty school playlist um, for cosmetology exam reviews. So, you know, check them all out. Tell me what you think and share them with anybody that you think they can help. All right. So what are our learning objectives today? Because we're here for a quick blast, right? Just a few minutes together. First, we're going to talk about the purpose of lightener. Why do we choose to use that over hair color? Because some people just don't understand that difference. They don't see that like you can't just choose hair color all the time and you can't just choose lightener all the time. So we'll talk about that. We're also going to talk a little bit about decolorization, how that affects our life when we use hair color, but also when we use lightener. What does that mean? How do we use decolorization to target where we're going? Okay, so we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about the main ingredients of lighteners and how they work together, because it's hugely important to me that not only do you know what products to choose, but you know why you're choosing them. And so I think that's something that I missed out on a lot when I was in hair school. And even at the beginning of my career, I was kind of using this because I'm like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to use. But I didn't quite understand the why. So we'll talk about that. And then finally, I am absolutely no expert on Olaplex. However, a lot of people have asked, what is it doing? Why would I use it? So I did my own research. And simply, that's all I have to kind of add to the story here with Olaplex is research that I read online that I'm going to share with you and hopefully kind of shed some light on why you might want to use Olaplex or one of these reparative systems that are there to kind of improve the quality of hair while we lighten. Okay. So that's what we're doing. So we start with the reasons to use lightener. Why would you choose it? Because there's some very specific reasons to use lightener over hair color. The first may be that they have previously colored hair. Remember, color doesn't lift color predictably. I always add that word because some color indeed does lift color, but when you're preparing for a state board, I want that out of your mind, that if somebody has previously colored hair, you've got to use lightener on it. So just remember that any type of color, even if it is a demi-permanent color, it's still sitting there. And if it's sitting there, you need to use a lightener if you're going to try to remove it. So that would be one reason. If you are trying, if you are trying to achieve more than four levels of lift. So most traditional hair colors can lift, lift up to four levels. And that depends on a lot of different things. Yes, they make high lift colors. They make specialty colors that claim to lift five or six levels on virgin hair, and that's all great. A lot of those work very well. But the general consensus is in the generic world of hair color for your state board is that if you are trying to go lighter than four levels, you need to use lighter. So that could be a reason you choose to, okay? It could be just that you have really stubborn hair. You could have somebody that has a lot, you know, is only going up three levels, but you know that they really have a lot of trouble lifting. Well, you might choose to switch to lightener because you need that extra push, that extra. So it could be that. 
finally, it could that you're be you could be that you're preparing for fantasy colors, all right? So fantasy colors are direct dyes. They're typically semi-permanent. I think there might be a few out now that are demi-permanent, but most of them are semi-permanent color. Whether it's demi or semi, it doesn't really matter. Those types of colors do not lift for you. So you have to pre-lighten and then deposit in the fantasy color to really get the tone that you're looking for. So it could be that you're doing that and that's why you've chosen to use a light brown. When we start lightening hair, we go through the different levels, okay? So the international system of hair color, uh, the level system is 10 levels. Now I know some colors have 12, some the American line has 11 or 12, I think it's 12. But the international system is 10 levels, and that's typically what your state board is going to reference when they ask those questions is the international system. Every single one of these levels comes with an undertone or something called an underlying pigment. These are colors that live in the hair already. It's what gives us richness. It's what gives us some, some depth to the hair are those underlying pigments. So they're actually really good. The thing is, when we start lightening it, we start to see those, right? So if you put lighter on level four hair, you are going to see red immediately. That's the first color that's going to pop out to you when you open up that foil is that red. The, the red is not a bad thing. It's just something that you have to know is going to be part of your formula, right? So if you are using hair color there, you would need to know that you're going to be dealing with red if you're in that level four world. If you are using lightener, you need to know where you're trying to go. If, if you're with a level three client and they want to go to a level eight, you are not ever going to lift to a beautiful level eight with your lightener. You're going to lift until you see that yellow color, then you're going to pull it and you will tone with the complementary color or with your neutral to get what you're trying to achieve. So understanding where, where each level or what each level has as their underlying pigment really helps you determine your timing when it comes to lightener because somebody has a level three and they're going to a level nine. I'm looking until I see that nice pale yellow. That's when it's time to pull it because I'm never going to pull it at this beautiful level nine, right? Even my hair, I'm a natural level seven and I lighten it and I lighten it until I'm pretty darn yellow. I'm like a level 10 right now till I'm about a very pale yellow. And then I use a violet, you know, demi-permanent color to tone myself. So just know that that's, you know, you need to know those underlying pigments as you're lightening hair because it helps you determine your timing, all right? So lightener has two main ingredients, ammonia and hydrogen peroxides. It's the same thing as most hair colors out there. Ammonia carries a pH of about 11.6, pretty high. So remember the, the pH of the hair is 4.5 to 5.5. The further we go away from home, the harsher it's going to be. So lightener can get pretty damaging if we're not careful. Lightener is the, or sorry, ammonia is the most common alkalizing agent that we find in lightener. So a common state for a test question would be, what is the commonly used alkalizing agent in lightener? It's ammonia. So alkalizing agent means it's above a level seven on the pH scale. And an alkalizing agent is opening up the cuticle. And that is indeed what ammonia is doing for us. It's opening up the cuticle layer. It's opening up the front door, okay? We find ammonia in the powder or the cream. So whether you're using cream, oil, gel, powder, whatever it is, the tub is where you find that ammonia, okay? So it mixes with hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide has a pH of 3.5. This creates a little bit of balance in terms of pH for you. This lives in your developer just like it does for hair color, right? So hydrogen peroxide, we that is contributed through pouring your developer into your powder, okay? The job of hydrogen peroxide is actually to break down the melanin and then oxidize with the ammonia. That's what makes the magic happen. So how does it all work, okay? First, the cuticle, or the, sorry, the ammonia softens up the cuticle layer and opens up the door. You got to open up the door to go into the party, right? And so that's what's happening here is the ammonia is opening up the door for you. Once it gets in, once that process begins, the ammonia starts to interact with the hydrogen peroxide. Together, they target the melanin and break them into smaller pieces, all right? That simple. The melanin is then oxidized, which means it's breaking down into itty bitty pieces. What happens is physics says nothing can be created nor destroyed, okay? So we can't, you don't, 
destroy the melanin. You don't wash it out of the hair. You don't get rid of the melanin. We basically shatter it into pieces so that light can pass through the hair strand, which allows our eyes to see lightness, all right? So that's what's happening. Ammonia and hydrogen peroxide get together, they have a little party, and they basically start beating up all the melanin into pieces. And once it's all broken into pieces, our hair gets lighter and lighter and lighter. First, they target the eumelanin, then they target the pheomelanin. So just as a reminder, because state board alert, right? Eumelanin always contributes to black and brown hair, while pheomelanin is always going to contribute to red or blonde hair. The more present, the more melanin of either type, the more present, the darker the hair is going to be. Most people have a combination of eumelanin and pheomelanin. It's not one or the other. So just kind of remember that. First, it's going to target all that eumelanin, then it starts targeting the pheomelanin. What's left after all of that is a very pale yellow color. And the, that is actually the color of the keratin protein. So when people wanna lighten their hair to white, you don't actually want to, because if you get to white, that means you have destroyed the keratin proteins in the hair, which means even if it's still in the head in that moment, it's probably falling off very soon, <laughs> okay? So you don't ever actually wanna lighten the hair to white. You wanna lighten it to that pale yellow, which means you've left the proteins in there but broken up most of the different types of melanin within it, okay? So the dangers of lightener, because people have a fear of it, and I get it. If you were alive in the 80s, I was a child of the 80s. If you were alive in the 80s, everybody's hair was fried. <laughs> and a lot of that came because we'd bleach it like crazy, and then we'd put perms on it, and it was we used Aquanet, and it was just terrible for us, right? Lightener, part of the danger is it's like a tornado. It goes in the hair and it breaks up everything. It doesn't just hit the melanin. So as much as I would like to say, oh, it just goes in and it targets these little melanin molecules, that's just not realistic. It's not smart enough to do that. It goes in, it breaks up proteins, it breaks up amino acids, it breaks up structures. It's like a, it's like a tornado, guys. So you have to be careful with it. It's why you have to be so cautious when you relax hair. You remember, if you've watched my videos on relaxer, we leave hair in a broken state when we relax it. So if you throw lightener on top of it, it's like taking a broken, like a broken down barn and then putting a tornado through it and seeing what happens. So you do have to be careful. So what about Olaplex, right? Everyone wants to know like, you know, what is it doing? And, you know, there's a couple, I, I even know there's some people on my Facebook, Donna, I know Donna is an Olaplex person, um, that really focus on all of Olaplex and, and they really swear by it. And it is amazing what it does, but what is it doing? Okay, so what Olaplex does is it restores and rebuilds the bonds using something called, and I'm going to say it wrong, I promise, Bisaminopropyl diglycol demaliate. I am sure that's wrong. Do not be like, that's how Teresa said it because I'm totally winging it, okay? But that's what it's going to use. So how is it working? Well, a broken disulfide bond, which happens when we lighten hair, we tend to break disulfide bonds just by nature of what we're doing, ends up leaving a sulfur atom kind of hanging alone, all right? So this sulfur atom, if you've ever watched my perm videos, I talk about the sulfur sisters and I refer to them as girls. And so this sulfur atom is kind of like that lone girl she got broken up with and she's angry. She is angry. She does not want to be alone. Okay. So the sulfur atom is always going to go seek out companionship. All right. If there's no options, it's going to find some random oxygen molecule and just hang out with them. Right. So if you have, if you know, a girl like that, right. That if she's angry and she's hurting, she goes out and she finds the first person available to them. And it's not usually a great situation. What happens when sulfur meets up with that oxygen, it creates something called cysteic acid. Unfortunately, cysteic acid actually eats the protein of your hair. It goes in and just like, nom, 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 like pack my light. It wants to eat that hair. So it's not a good situation when the sulfur does that. So what Olaplex does is it supplies, here's my alert again, I can't say it right, this aminopropyl diglycol demaliate to the hair. And it actually races to that sulfur atom and grabs onto it before it can ever get to the oxygen, right? So it's in a race. It wants to beat oxygen to sulfur so that at least it's a good influence on the sulfur atom. This keeps that sulfur happy so they don't go around destroying everything, right? Happy, happy wife, happy life. It's the same idea. Happy sulfur, happy hair. I don't know the best way to say it, but that's basically what's happening, right? So the Olaplex goes in and it races to beat that sulfur atom to oxygen so that it can hold on to sulfur and it doesn't turn into the cystic acid, all right? So that's what Olaplex is doing. I know it's a lot, but people have asked. So I did some research and that's, that's what we got, okay? 
Here's the thing. Leitner does not need to be feared. It does need to be respected though, because it is a little bit of magic. I mean, it really makes, it gives us an opportunity to really do amazing things with hair, but you do have to respect it because it is doing some stuff, right? So how do we formulate with Leitner? All right. So things we need to consider, we consider the texture, how coarse is the hair? How soft is the hair? How fine is the hair? Because if somebody has super coarse hair, that means that the cuticle layer is super tight, super, super tight. It's like a steel jaw, which means it's going to be a lot harder to soften the cuticle and lift it up. So we have to consider that when we're doing it, that we might need a stronger formula to do it. We need to think about how much melanin needs to be broken up. So basically how dark was the hair, right? If you have level two hair, you need a lot more action than somebody with me, right? I don't need a whole lot to make it happen. So how much melanin is present? Cause that's gonna make a big difference. You need to consider previous color and chemicals. If somebody has layers upon layers upon layers of color on their hair, it's gonna be difficult to lighten that back out. It's probably gonna take multiple steps, multiple sessions. It's not something that's gonna go like that, right? Also consider other chemicals. If somebody has permed their hair in the past, even if their hair is straight at that point, remember when we perm hair, we break their sulfide bonds. So even if the hair seems okay, if you know that the ends of that hair have previous ammonium thioglycolate on it, chances are it's going to be more fragile. You need to use something softer or you could break the hair easily. Consider the health of the hair. You know, not all damage comes from chemicals. It could be from swimming. Like I, even though I live in New Hampshire now, I'm a Florida kid. And so I swam and swam and swam. Well, all that chlorine buildup makes your hair very fragile. So it could be something like that. It could be curling irons and flat irons that are doing the damage, but consider the health of the hair because the more damaged the hair is, the more gentle formula you need to use. You need to be super cautious, okay? So there are three or four main types of lightener, but three that really appear on your state board. Gel or oil, oil is usually what shows up, but an oil lightener, a cream lightener, and a powder lightener. So an oil or gel lightener is usually very gentle. You can usually get about five levels of lift out of it. So this is for somebody who has maybe fine hair, previously colored hair, previously damaged hair. Um, maybe stuff like my hair would be fine. I, I'm only lifting up really about three levels and my hair is really fine. So I could totally get away with an oil or a gel lightener. And you have your cream lightener. Also, the cream in there is conditioner, basically. It's full of protein and moisturizers. Both of these are cream and oil, okay? Same thing, gentle. You get about five to six levels of lift out of that. You can get a little bit more usually than the oil, um, but all those conditioners really slow things down. So you need to recognize that an oil or cream, it's gonna take some time. It is not gonna shoot up very quickly, okay? That's what you have your powder for. Powder lighteners are the most extreme. You get about seven to eight levels of lift out of it. So this is when you're really, really trying to lift it up. Now, I will say your state board usually will say that powder lightener is not meant for on the scalp lightening, but that cream and oil are. That's usually what the textbooks will say. And that's what you have to remember for your exam is that if they say which is a suitable choice for on the scalp lightening, it would be cream or oil. If they say which of these is a suitable choice for off the scalp lightening, it would be powder. With that being said, most product lines at this point have formulated so that powder can go on the scalp. I will tell you, most product lines tell you not to put it under the dryer. Okay. Now I know stylists do it. They throw it under heat. Heat opens things up. So it makes things work a little faster. Here's the thing. If the manufacturer tells you that you should not put it under heat and then you put it under heat and you burn a client, you are now liable for it. Okay. Which means they can sue you. Whereas if you followed the manufacturer's directions and something happens, now you have some leverage that it could have been a product malfunction and not a stylist malfunction. So make sure no matter what you're using, you read the manufacturer's directions and you follow them. So there you have it, guys. This is my very quick review. I know it's kind of all over the place. I feel a little crazy because I'm sitting, I'm actually in Texas right now. Um, and so I, I just kind of like threw this out. I was gonna, like, I'm going to record this right now. Um, but there you have it. There's your lightener video. Okay. And touching on all the plugs, really kind of going into those lighteners and why we use it, and what we do and all that jazz. Okay. So 
If you liked this video, please go back, watch some of my other videos, share it with everybody that you know. You know, this is a good one to even maybe share with people not in the industry because a lot of people seem to think it's just fine to slap on some lightener and they don't understand what they're doing. So share this with whoever you think it can help. Um, and absolutely, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm always trying to grow and reach more people. So thanks so much, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. And I cannot wait to bring you some more content coming soon. All right, have a great day.